death row inmate John Grant executed. There are some crimes that are so reprehensible that that is the ultimate option. But tonight... I've witnessed uh, about 14 executions, and uh, so I've, I've never witnessed that before. There are questions about how the execution was carried out. It appears that for a third time in a row, uh, the Oklahoma uh, lethal injection protocol did, did not proceed as planned. Oklahoma's first execution in nearly seven years carried out at 421 this afternoon. Just a few hours before that, the U.S. Supreme Court vacating a stay that was in place. Allowing the state to move forward with John Grant's execution as scheduled. Grant, an inmate already, when he stabbed Gay Carter to death with a prison shank inside a broom closet more than two decades ago. Tonight, the last minutes of Grant's life, and something one witness says he's never seen happen inside the execution chamber. News 4's Jessica Bruno is at the state prison in McAllister. John Marion Grant was pronounced unconscious at 415 and dead at 421. And right after the first drug, midazolam, was administered, witnesses who were inside say he started violently convulsing and vomiting, something one media witness says he's never seen before. And Grant's attorneys consider it a botched execution. I've never seen an inmate vomit. I've seen, I've witnessed uh, about 14 executions, and uh, so I've, I've never witnessed that before. That's Sean Murphy from the Associated Press. He witnessed the execution of John Marion Grant on Thursday, the first execution in Oklahoma since 2015 when they were put on hold following several botched executions. Tonight's execution was notable in that uh, the inmate, uh, Mr. Grant, once the uh, midazolam started flowing, he did convulse more than two dozen times, and uh, th those were pretty violent convulsions while he was strapped to the gurney. Followed by the vomiting, Murphy says it rolled down Grant's neck, and Department of Corrections staff had to wipe his face twice. The vomiting was an unusual, something I hadn't seen before, and so, um, you know, that seemed to be a problem. Uh, especially because at that point he's still trying to breathe and his face is covered with vomit. It was, uh, you know, clearly a problem with him not being able to breathe. All of this happening just two hours after the U.S. Supreme Court overturned a stay of execution for Grant issued by the 10th Circuit Court of Appeals on Wednesday. This is the uh, fourth execution that I've witnessed uh, in which midazolam, the sedative, was the first drug. The first of those was the execution of Clayton Lockett in 2014. Which was well documented um, problematic execution. Witnesses watched for about 40 minutes. Lockett was convulsing, appearing to be in pain, according to their testimony. The execution was called off and the media hearing a short time later that Lockett had died of a heart attack, which is why the state's execution protocol, a three-drug cocktail that begins with midazolam, is being challenged in court at an upcoming trial in February. The attorneys for around 30 death row inmates calling it unconstitutional. The uh, Tenth Circuit stayed Mr. Grant's execution so that uh, issues about uh, midazolam could be resolved um, at trial in February, uh, but uh, and, and that's why the U.S. Supreme Court should not have uh, lifted the stay. In McAllister, Jessica Bruno, Oklahoma's News 4. Grant's last words were, let's go, followed by some profanities. DOC officials ultimately turned the microphone off so the witnesses do not know what was said after that. The Department of Corrections saying tonight, quote, Inmate Grant's execution was carried out in accordance with Oklahoma Department of Corrections protocols and without complication.